So it's very rare when you come across material that not only do you love that you want to make, but that you're um, in a position to make. I was very excited about the idea of making a period film about the TV series Showing Roots. I remember what a profound impact it had on me as a kid. And to take that serious subject uh, and the impact of that series and put it in the context of a film uh, about a small southern town whose racial balance gets turned upside down by the airing of that miniseries and how that drama plays out in a beauty parlor uh, was a way of sort of touching all of these issues in a very kind of, you know, meaningful but entertaining uh, way. What attracted me to this project was the script. I hadn't really seen um, a movie quite like this. In terms of this time in our history, recent history, and seeing characters like these try to come together and work past the current climate to do something greater for a community. We need hope, a reminder that if we always pursue love, there's always hope. From what I understand, this is a little um, loosely based on Susan, the writer's um, um, own experiences growing up in a southern segregated town um, when Roots came on. And I, again, it's, it's so powerful today. I could only imagine what it would do uh, what it could do to a small town in the South in 1977. The script, I thought it was a really interesting combination of uh, a subject that was very, very deep and serious, but tackled in a way that had a lot of humor and a lot of humanity. And I thought it was an interesting challenge to, to try to capture a tone that is very funny, but that says something quite important and profound. When I read the script, I was really moved by it and, and really struck how it really approached really serious subject matter with such a, a fresh romantic take of a modern fairy tale, really. And, and that felt so new and wonderful to me. And so I really fought for the role. <laughs> I wrote Michael a letter. I was just in love with it. And then the director of this movie, Michael Wilson, you know, we wanted somebody who was particularly good with performances. He comes from the Broadway background and he's from the South, so he kind of understands the mentality. You know, this is like a Southern story in many ways. It's a universal, but it's Southern. In terms of casting, the roles were so rich and so powerful. We really wanted to get the very best actors we could get. You know, with Maggie Grace and Uzu Aduba and Elizabeth McGovern and, and Cicely Tyson and Adam Brody, I could not in my wildest imaginations have imagined putting together this kind of cast with this strength and this um, magnitude of, of talent. Casting is so critical on any movie. It just elevates it to a point where you take great material and you make it even better with a, a great cast, which we have. I think the biggest strengths of this story are the other starring roles, the other characters. I think Pearl and Bud are such unique and nuanced and, and funny people in really unfunny circumstances. And I think audiences are gonna love that. You know, we love movies to entertain us and let us escape, but we also love them to strike at the truth and to give us hope for justice and romance and fulfillment in life and all of the good stuff. Thank you, be Mark. Okay, clearing, action. The saga begins with Kunta Kinte, an African youth, captured by slave raiders and brought to America in chains. No, wait. That's my work. I can't get it to the balloon to get the chip. Now, who bust your balloon? I don't want to talk about this. Pearl, she has a lot of stuff up until this moment that she's contested. Prior, 10 years ago, a lot of the freedoms that she is now experiencing were impossible. They felt like impossibilities. And realizing that she carries with her a lot of that frustration to this point where we meet her in her life. And she has a very strong opinion of how life might, might go for her. New cameras, Amar. Yeah. Action! No! No! Don't you even look where you're going? 
Adam has this quality that's that's so rare and it's so, you know, his reactions are so funny but so true at the same time. And it's the perfect, he just nails the tone. Bud is the outsider, Bud is not from here. You don't really get to see his home life, you don't get to see where he comes from. And so um, you're introduced to Violet's character first. She's incredibly sweet. I find her incredibly naive, but incredibly smart and gifted as well. And, and it's not always a good thing, but I, I definitely tend to look for a joke and lean on the, the humor and, and look for the humor in anything, even in very bleak situations. And for a movie about race, it's, it's, there are some fairly lighthearted characters. Everybody in the movie is so amazing. It's, you would think, and from day one too, because you'd think that we had known each other Prior to coming here, the first time when we were filming together was Elizabeth, myself, and Maggie, and we got into our older years, and it just felt like immediate connection. And even that first time in the Shirley's shop, and we just had a lot to say off camera, talking to each other, and connected in that way. And then it felt like an easy transition into the performance as well. And the, a shorthand for how we wanted to play together was developed so quickly. Two cameras, they become marked. Yeah. And action. What did that finger? What did that finger out of my sight? And that's a cut. The first thing that happened to me when I decided to work with this group of actors was I suddenly earned the respect of my kids because um, all three of them have such high status in my household that it, it, it sort of made me look good in their eyes. And then the second one was actually coming and working with them because they're all just so talented and delightful and nice. I just feel so lucky and privileged. I'm having too much fun working with so <laughs> we were really under the gun with the schedule and we need to keep moving at all times and we just adore each other so much that occasionally Michael has to be like, please stop singing show tunes and acting out Shirley and Laverne. It's time to, come on kindergartners, it's time to really focus on the theme. Oh, stop. Yeah, I said you were coming, but hey since guys, you're uh, here, come uh, on ben, in. Uh, it's the Uzo show. This week. Maggie is just awesome. I love her. I think she's such an awesome person. I think she's super talented as well, you know, and it's just been so wonderful being able to play with her and trying to develop the story together. I really, really, really have been having an incredible time. In a war. Thanks. In a war. <laughs> we just keep going. Camera, Zimmer. Action! This film is just a, it's a completely different tone, and I think audiences will love it for very different reasons. That at the core, it's really a story about a friendship between two women overcoming racism in their small town, and then the town reconciling and working through that. And so I think that, that audiences will love it, and I, I think it's really timely. I think that audiences really want to feel that love for each other right now. Just also on another note, having Ms. Tyson as a part of the cast was such a poetic and, and beautiful, full circle kind of things. She was in the original cast of Roots. I'd never seen Roots before, and I obviously watched it in preparation for this. I, I kind of couldn't get over the fact that that many people saw it in 1977 on broadcast television. And it's, it's, it's racy and risque parts of it, but more than anything, the fact that they nailed, to me, one of the more powerful things I've ever seen on screen. The idea of doing a movie not of Roots, but about Roots, and, and you know, and then among, uh, and then and then a hair salon. I mean, it, it's just a lot of fun, and it, especially for a movie about race relations, that can you know be very heavy, and there's a place for those too. But to do it in a way where I don't know, it's also got a lot of comedy. I hope this film will be received with love. I think it will be received that way. I think what this film teaches us is that there is love, despite hurdles being placed in front of you. There can be love on the other side of it. Um, I think what this film teaches us that we are all one town. We're all one community. You know, whenever you can make someone laugh and cry at the same time, uh, which I believe this movie does, um, you know, you, you've really achieved something of value. I'm very proud of making this movie and I think we'll have an audience for it.